Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 89 today for the Las Vegas Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the opening round of this season at the Australian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one as we kicked off with a real big bang, some real close fights with, no surprise, our two former French teammates, Theo Porcher and Pierre Gasly, that duo at the now in independent Lamborghini team and alongside that the ever-present Yuki Tsunoda in Aston Martin but both Aston Martins featuring very high in the points so they're picking up from where they left off at the end of last season but we saw some really great fighting all up and down the field the Audi's getting in the mixer Red Bull also quietly scoring uh, both points with Liam Lawson and Lando Norris so if that's a sign of things to come I think it's going to be a very tough fight in the top 10 between four teams at least BMW Aston Lamborghini and Audi and Red Bull, who knows if they can make some improvements or they're just, you know, gonna find that momentum potentially they could do something but uh, on the other opposite end of the spectrum maybe a first race to forget for the likes of Ferrari and McLaren Ferrari especially I really thought they were going to be right up there but they just were nowhere to be seen in that first race we'll see how it goes here in Las Vegas a very exciting place to come to in round two with the slipstream being absolutely astronomical on the back straight it's going to be a very interesting one and for me personally you know, I've really enjoyed the Las Vegas Grand Prix on this game, but um, we've never quite got it across the line. You know, we've had various problems over the seasons, whether it be drama right at the end, getting the race win stolen from us is, you know, because the slipstream is so powerful. Or remember the first year we had the new custom Lambo engine. We had the gearbox jamming. So I'm hoping we can get a clean race weekend here and try and improve on what we saw in Australia, which was a little lack of race pace actually compared to Lamborghini and Aston Martin um, which is not usual for us usually we go even quicker in the race but uh, it felt like we were lacking a little bit to completely outright keep up with people so let's see and obviously hopefully not going to be tripping up with anyone uh, knock on wood you know we're definitely going to be taking a bit more cautiously with the likes of Pierre Gassi let's say as I alluded to at the end of last episode I think the rules of engagement we need to keep it a lot cleaner with Gasly. otherwise well and truly this rivalry we've got is going to turn into the next Verstappen Ham Hamilton sort of situation but Q1 then you saw there went very well actually the car uh, and myself and Jensen both looking really good and the my team car is always gone well around Las Vegas I feel you know and with the maxed out car super lightweight chassis we know the BMW engine oh, basing off Australia was pretty decent actually you know when we were fight when we were fighting and we didn't have the damage I felt like we could actually attack people uh, and go for it so I'm actually looking forward to seeing how we progress in the rest of this qualifying and then into the race button up there in second place we're P4 I was looking for an improvement but we just don't find the time on the second run red first sector red second and in the end I actually just decided to bail out of it but hopefully that lap time is going to be enough to get us through into the top 10 it thankfully will we remain in p4 Jensen remains in p2 but Picking up from last episode, Porsche and Gasly up there first and third place, both Audis. But surprisingly, and a nice surprise, Ferrari actually deciding to perform the way they were at the end of last season. And they're both in the top 10. So maybe Australia was just a massive bit of hard luck and just a fluke for Ferrari. But big news on the other side of the spectrum, Sonoda out of qualifying although let's remember last season every time there was a race where it was very engine dependent straight line speed Aston Martin never qualified well it seems like the Aston car is definitely stronger on the chassis side and downfall side of things and doesn't have the pure engine power with that Honda power unit so that's maybe not actually too shocking if you think about it from last season and really this might just be a damage limitation race for Aston Martin as we now go into Q3 unfortunately starting Q3 with a little slight problem but it's going to be a, a minor one we'll still get out there for two different runs thankfully and as we're in the middle of that first flying lap I, I noticed on the on the top left there Jensen Button P9 so his first run's really not been well don't know what's going on there maybe he 
faced a bit of traffic or just for whatever reason didn't get a decent lap time in there. So JB a bit under pressure maybe on that second run for us. Little love tap on the wall. So maybe lost a bit of time there through that left-hander setting up the rest of the main straight as we now cut to the end of the straight. The final corner. Go at run to the line and it's going to be P6 then with a 129.37. So... I feel like there's improvement to make, but alas, to my surprise, on the second run, like in Q2, Deja Vu, red in the first sector, red the second, we're narrowly, narrowly up by, you know, what, three hundredths of a second, three and a half hundredths of a second there, and that actually enough, that's enough to actually improve by two positions, which shows how tight it was in the middle of that top 10 pack there. Because, yeah, 0 0.035 pulled me up from P6 to P4, but it didn't matter in the end because Teo Porcher is in a world of his own. Hmm, does this seem familiar? Teo Porcher winning the first race and then going on to win the second race in a league of his own. Hmm, where have I seen that? Oh, right, last season. This is feeling all too familiar. And you know what? Yeah, we said this last episode, this is poor Chair's domain. When he's not in traffic, he's got that clean air, he can get his head down and go off into the distance. So I'm worried about this. I, we need to hope that Sainz and Verstappen, and obviously included us, can take the fight to Borchair early on on lap one. Otherwise, I fear he may run away with it, you know, 0.333 ahead of everyone else. That's a bit ridiculous. Away from him, it's super close, so it's going to be a very tough fight. Hopefully, Jensen can recover from P10. Clearly impeded and didn't get a good lap in. It is what it is. We have to make up for it on his side of the garage on Sunday. Let's go to the race. <laughs> Right, we're in P4, which is a pretty damn decent position to be here for the Las Vegas Grand Prix. But I am concerned about how quick Teo Porcher could be. Hoping that Sainz Verstappen ahead of me can give him a fight and then we can get involved as well. And to that effect, we are going aggressive. We're going bold and I'm starting on the soft compound of tyre. Yep, no one else will be on this tyre. Just me, others on mediums around me, probably outside the top 10 people on hards, potentially. We're going aggressive. This probably will end up being a two-stop. I'm thinking soft to hards to softs again because I really just want to use the pace of the car. I think there's a bit more in there that I didn't find in qualifying, and I think I'm just concerned about Porsche walking away in the first stint. We need to really put a damper on him if we can, and, and others as well, and make sure that we can try and control the race, or at least keep within whoever's up there in P1 fighting for the top position. So to do that, we're going bold. We're going on the soft tyre. Whether it works out, well, we're going to find out as we go to five red lights here in Las Vegas for round number two. Lights out and away we go. It's a slow start for Borchere. It's a real monumentally slow start for the Frenchman. Carlos signs into the lead for Audi. The Ferrari of Verstappen round our outside in uh, down in third place as we're up into second, but it's a little bit of a wobble as the rear end gets away from us. We flirt dangerously close to the wall on the left and Verstappen has the run in the Ferrari and he's going to go down our inside and do so well just to come across and awkwardly place his car and through the next sequence of corners that we just can't go for that repass for second place. So Verstappen gets us fair and square. To be fair, it was a good move. We made that small error uh, through the long right hand on that slingshot to that little straight before the T-Mobile Sphere area. But uh, what a start then from Carlos Sainz, the man of the hour in real life Formula 1 and the man of the hour right here, right now, here in this series. Leads the way for Audi. Poor chair, the pole sitter, down to fourth place. That is... um. In some ways, the best scenario, the man I was so worried about, who had over three tenths in his pocket to the rest of the grid, is down to P4. But it's only lap one, we've got a long way to go, and Verstappen is immediately on the back of Carlos Sainz with this slipstream here. We're going to be seeing a lot of this, I'm sure, as Verstappen tries to take the lead away from Sainz. This is actually quite uncanny. Two different teams to in real life, but it's a very similar fight to what we had in real life at the Australian Grand Prix, 
Lewis gone this past weekend. Verstappen v Sainz, but it's Audi versus Ferrari, not Red Bull in the mixer. And we're trying to get involved with our BMW car. We just can't quite make the move on the inside. And meanwhile, we've got Russell in the other Ferrari trying to go round the outside. What a move that is going to be for Russell on poor chair. And poor chair looks like he's flustered from the opening lap because now all of a sudden Pierre Gasly might come through. It's three wide between the two Lambos and the Ferrari. I didn't even know three abreast was possible in that corner. And they're still three wide. This is incredible stuff. They're actually still going for it. This is, this is surely impossible. I did not even know it was physically possible for there to be three cars going side by side through that entire section. It, it seems far too narrow when you're, when you're driving yourself on the onboard there. Incredible stuff as we lock the rear and it's a bit of a Jim Carner slide through the left-hander. That's going to offset us a bit and Leclerc is going to get the run on us as it's once again Verstappen chasing after Sainz. He pulls out for the lead but now I've got my own things to worry about. We've got Leclerc in the other Audi neck and neck with us as Verstappen moves to the inside now to cover off Sainz to take the lead of the Grand Prix here in Las Vegas and Leclerc has done so, so well to keep his foot in there through that section. And it was a case of who's going to blink first. And I very much did blink first. And we also lost the rear end. You can see my rear tyres are slightly more worn out than my front. So we're facing a decent amount of tyre wear. This was always maybe the, the gamble with the softs that we are going to face tyre wear quicker than the others. But at the moment, it's still sort of working out for us as we're still within the fight. Look at Leclerc though. Oh my word. Leclerc, what a move that is. It's a double pass. He's into the lead of the Grand Prix and Sainz and Verstappen are far too busy still fighting with each other as we close up now. Verstappen on the left, Sainz on the right, they're still going to be at it, neither wants to give room, and now here we go through, sailing, drifting through, what an overtake, what a double overtake that is from us, myself and Leclerc, uh, GG's, hand firm handshakes between myself and Leclerc there, both of us have made a double overtake on Sainz and Verstappen, because these two uh, old old school teammates from their Torosso days. They're just far too concerned with each other. There's Leclerc. I mean, it looked more impressive from where I was sat. On board, it was a pretty easy pass for Leclerc. But this move from us, this was nice. A little switch from left to right. A drift for good measure as we did it. But we somehow drifted our way through and there was room there on the inside to make that double pass there. Unbelievable stuff. And this was a replay of back on lap two. Jensen versus one of the land Lamborghini cars, the McLaren also involved with Oscar Piastri. Piastri, oh, he's going to ruin the party for Jensen Button because Piastri actually goes for the double pass on Jensen and the Lambo, Pierre Gasly. Meanwhile, it's poor chair versus Russell again uh, at the end of that straight. Uh, the, the Ferrari gets the better of the Lamborghini and Piastri, fair and square, got the double pass done on our own teammate and Pierre Gasly. Some incredible overtakes going on and it's only lap three. Like, genuinely already contenders for overtakes of the season going on here as we now continue back to the live action watching Jensen Button go down the inside of Piastri Button up against his old team McLaren and he's got the better of the Australian back up into P7 and Sonoda is slowly making his way up up to P9 it might be P8 here obviously a race of damage limitation for Aston Martin not maybe having quite the engine power with that Honda power unit it, but he's doing well here as I think he's up into P8 but I think Piastri might still be there yes he is the McLaren is still there on the left I don't know what's in the coding uh, on this season but the AI they're really going for it in this second sector like I've never seen side by side fighting like this before from the AI it, it, I mean it's incredible I'm not complaining but I'm just taken aback really this is unbelievable stuff there but uh, yeah Leclerc leads the way we're in second place we're trying to break the one second for Sainz in third just so we can focus on getting our head down and seeing if we can try and bridge the gap to Leclerc lap five we are outside one 
second of Leclerc. And unfortunately, Sainz is very much within one second of us. He's bringing the gap down to six tenths of the second. So could we be trying to fight two Audis in a moment? Because we're trying to close on Leclerc. But Sainz is coming at us quicker than we're coming at Leclerc. Safety car is out, though as uh, someone is out, and that's uh, probably an awkward position, I, I assume, parked with a very narrow circuit, uh, this being here in Las Vegas. And so this is going to open up the door for a free pit stop for us. Leclerc's in, though, as well. So this might just change our strategy, you know. As we come in, we're going to go onto the hard tyres, the original plan that we always had. But now we're going to have to kind of play this by ear, see what others go on, like tyre compounds, and then we'll decide what we're doing from here. But this is a free pit stop for me, for, for many others who are in as well, you know, Leclerc included. Button's in as well. We're double stacking, which I'm very happy about. I'm so glad to see Button came in behind me, and we timed that really well. You didn't see it there, but as I exited the pit box, Button was just a little bit behind, so I don't think he got delayed too much. But uh, in contrast, Gasly stayed out in the other Lamborghini. I think Porsche did come in. Gasly stayed out. Magnus and Joe Guan Yu also stayed out. A bit peculiar decision from some of these guys not to double stack with their own respective teammates. And even more so because now they come in still under the safety car. So it's kind of almost like last season Jeddah when a few people, well, when, I, when my championship rivals made a howler under the safety car. So Bottas, even more of a weird choice. He's still staying out. So Bottas is the one who's going to lead us back into green flag racing. Leclerc second, myself third, Sainz fourth, Verstappen fifth. Verstappen's chosen softs. So that has to mean Ferrari are doing a two-stop. Leclerc ahead of me on the mediums, so he's not changed compound. So he has to do a two-stop as well. So we take it easy into turn one because you know Bottas is going to hold up Leclerc. And can we now? Oh, my God. Okay. I was going to say, can we just slip through on the left-hand side there as Bottas holds up Leclerc? But instead, my rear end wanted to go sideways and we almost put it in the wall. We've gone very aggressive with our defense to make sure we stay in P3. Leclerc goes on the outside. Bit of contact with the fin. Can we slip through and follow Leclerc through? Yes, we can. And it's a virtual safety car almost immediately after the safety cars come out. And uh, hang on a minute. What? Illegal overtake on Bottas. I was ahead of him when the virtual safety car came out. Are you kidding me? He dive bombed us as the virtual safety car. Well, it was up. It was out. And he dive bombed me. And because he got ahead at the next corner, he apparently is allowed to be ahead. Very, very peculiar. A uh, bit puzzling, that one. FIA, a bit dodgy. It's almost like the FIA don't want me to do well here in Las Vegas. They want to keep the bad luck rolling here in Nevada as uh, we now close up to Bottas. And because we were technically ahead, I can be side by side with him as we go back to green flags. And in a way, ironically, this is going to help me out because now I have a great run on Leclerc. We're going to pull alongside him. No DRS here. So it's going to be a pure drag race of engine power. Audi versus BMW to the next corner. We get ahead of the apex, but Leclerc's still there. Leclerc gets the elbow out. Contact made. Contact made at the next left-hander. Tires banging and Leclerc gets the better exit off that complex of corner. He comes back around the outside. We're going to be neck and neck again. We nearly make more contact in through to the next apex. Both Aldis going for the move. Leclerc is the one that comes through though. This is a titanic scrap for P1 versus Leclerc. We've not really ever had a major battle with Leclerc in this series on this game yet. And for the first time we're really doing it. This is absolutely thrilling. Both of us right to the limit, right to the limit, but we've not made full-blown contact. There's been no funny business. It is just hard and fair racing here as we get the better of Leclerc on that straight, but we lock up. We go deep into the next left-hander. It's probably my weakest corner on the entire circuit, and Leclerc has exploited that with a double dive bomb there. He just keeps on putting his car on the inside, and we just can't do anything about it because if we, if we turn in, we're going to break our front wing, and now we're still going at it. Leclerc gets ahead of 
on this occasion. We're going to have to maybe just stick behind him as we are pretty much inches away from pushing his rear wing through that brake zone. Uh, but now we're the ones in second place. So we have the run with the slipstream. So although Leclerc's done very well to get back ahead of us, to be honest, he maybe should have tried to stick behind us on purpose because we can just do this once again and we have an even better run than we did last time out because we're not coming off a virtual safety car. So we fully get into first place by the brake zone and we're into P1 of this race. But my oh my, that was a, that was a memorable battle with Leclerc. Like I said, the first time we've really fought Leclerc on this entire game, like that har harshly for first place. Uh, riveting stuff there, but both Audi second in third looking pretty good hang on a minute what Sonoda P4 how's he done that Yuki so he really is him Sonoda is him he just keeps turning up in high positions now he's going for the move on science how is he doing this the Aston Martin doesn't have this much pace around here but Sonoda is going for the move we know how good he is at overtaking uh, from last season he, he his AI is literally just gone to a new level and yes yeah, Sonoda up to third place JB in a decent decent P5 though quietly that's pretty good as well so both Sonoda and Button have climbed up the positions clearly in the pit stops and now Sonoda's P2 what is going on Sonoda <laughs> he is actually cooking Sonoda up to P2 Joe Grand News down in P20 this is all Sonoda is doing as he has to fight Leclerc though at the next left hander because the Audi's got the better straight line speed so he can come back at him but Sonoda is defiant in the corners remains in second place this is incredible. I really did not think Sonoda was going to be up there. He shouldn't be up there. The Aston clearly wasn't that quick, uh, you know, from last season to this season in quali. But he's just done it. He just does it time and time again. It's it's how he was in the championship fight last season. Just making so many moves and getting to the right positions in the race. Meanwhile, look at this incredible fighting for the for the kind of last couple of points paying positions. Side by side, poor chair and Piastri. It was also side by side moments for the Mercedes and the two Ferraris. Now it's Ferrari versus Ferrari. Russell versus Verstappen. Russell round the outside. Maybe a little bit of contact there, but Russell gets through cleanly enough up into P7. Verstappen down to P8. And again, Red Bull, at least with Lando Norris there, again, quietly going about their business. Lando's in a very good position, P6 compared to, you know, where, where I thought Red Bull were going to be in this race again. So there's a few little, you know, there's a few little races going on here that have kind of gone unnoticed, you know, like Sonoda. I didn't realise how high up he was. Lando's come out of nowhere for P6. Button as well, to be fair. He's recovered well because he was at one point, you know, down in P7. And now he's P5. Might be P4 as uh, Leclerc and Sonoda swap. But we're focusing on Jensen Button here because for the first time, he gets up into the top four in this race. So that is making up for Saturday. He was P10 in quali. Got impeded. Didn't get the laps in. But Jensen Button is now up into fourth place and hopefully can push away from Sainz in the same way I'm looking to push away from Leclerc. We've broken DRS and Sonoda and Leclerc, they basically just keep swapping. Lap 14, look at the gap. It's like 0.35. Every lap, Sonoda and Leclerc have been swapping left, right, left, right on that back straight. And that's just allowed me a lot of breathing room to build this gap to three seconds. As we now see Carl Lando having a scrap. Lando Norris having a go at his old pal Carlos Sainz. Red Bull, Ford versus Audi. And Lando gets up into P5. This is a brilliant race for, for, for Lando and Red Bull. If you look at where Lawson is and you just look at where Red Bull were, uh, you know, last season. That is a strong, strong race position for Lando Norris P5 lap 16 two laps later we are controlling this race and meanwhile Leclerc and Sonoda they're in remember all of the all those guys they pit from mediums onto another set of mediums the same with Jensen Button Lando though Lando's on hards as am I and I said maybe there might be a change of strategy I'm thinking I, I reckon Lando's going to the end. I reckon I could go to the end. I think me and Lando can do a one-stop each. So this could be the Red Bull driver up to second place once Button pits. And, uh, you know, I was mocking Lamborghini for not pitting earlier under the safety car. They've actually come back into the race because 
they pit onto hards, even if it was a late pit stop under the safety car on the second lap, because they've stayed out on hards, they've actually jumped a few people. So the Lambos are back into the points. But yeah, for me, it's pretty plain sailing. Lap 18 onto 19, we're going to continue on. Lando's going to continue on. Uh, Leclerc's up to third place. Sonoda fourth because Button's finally pit, of course. But yeah, me and Lando, we can definitely go to the end. So if nothing else changes, this could be a very easy coast tour. My Okay, I spoke too soon. I was about to say coast to the end there and I almost completely deck the car into the wall. Okay, so there might be a little bit of tyre wear involved. So that's why we need to be easy. But we've got 13 seconds to take it easy and make sure we protect the tyres. But there's a late, late drama and a final twist in the tail here as a safety car, a second one, has come out here on lap 19. This is actually good for us, though. Because we didn't make a pit stop. So this is another free pit stop. We've not had a normal pit stop in this race. The others have. Leclerc, Sonoda. That was a normal pit stop for them. To go on to hards and the medium for Sonoda. But for us, we've not actually made a pit stop that hasn't been under a safety car. So maybe our luck is changing here at Las Vegas. For once, it's all coming towards me. We might be gambling here in Las Vegas. And it's all coming up our av here. As we come out in second place. Lando's opted not to pit. I have because I thought it was a no-brainer. We're going to come out in second place on a set of soft tyres. Four laps to go. Lando's tyres are very worn, so I'm going to be able to overtake him easily. And the cars behind me, they're not going to really, you know, fluster me too much because they're, you know, they're on hards. They're on mediums. We're on softs. They only have to go, you know, four laps. So this is looking very good. We commence racing into turn one just nice and easy knowing that Lando, there you go, bit of a twitch and it's going to be an easy pass on the outside there. He's already wobbling a bit as his tyre wear is really hurting him and he's going to regret not pitting. He should have pit Lando Norris and this is going to hurt because now Leclerc and Sonoda are either side of him, three abreast Red Bull, Audi and Aston and Sonoda might take the both of them. This is incredible. Sonoda in the last laps here gets up to second. He's on mediums, remember? So he's on a quicker compound than Leclerc. The Aston Martin and Sonoda might put a pull the blinder here because they've they're ending this race on a quicker compound than most because the rest of them behind Sonoda, I think they're all on hard tires. So Sonoda's done very well there as JB gets up into P4, Lando falling down the order. He's gonna regret not pitting under that second safety car. But it's great news for our teammate, Jensen Button, up to P4. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping he could actually have a go at Leclerc. This would be awesome to get a double podium here in Las Vegas after Button qualified P10 and just the race we've had really it's been such a thrilling one it'd be great to top it off with a double podium but meanwhile P10 fight between poor chair Russell and Sainz and Sainz is coming through and cutting through the both of them like a hot knife through butter three wide but Sainz keeps his wits about him and the Audi makes a double overtake on Russell and poor chair and poor chair actually loses two positions in one there as he's down to P12. Yeah, I've said it before, the racing today, it's been in insane. What is in the coding today? The AI have been on a mad one. So many three wides, two wides in sector two. Uh, as we see again, uh, Ocon now overtaking the... Oh, that's a bit awkward. Ocon overtaking the Stappen there in the Mercedes uh, versus the Ferrari car. As Button is on the outside of Leclerc. I saw, but we're focusing on the fight between Gasly and Bottas. As Gasly gets up into P7 for Lamborghini. But ahead, what a camera shot that was. Jensen, Button and Leclerc side by side. Jensen on the left on the inside for the next left hander he's up into third he's up into third we've got two laps left though and that Audi's very good in a straight line so it's not over yet but JB right now makes it a double podium for this team I'm also still in, I'm still gobsmacked Sonoda's up in P2 that is probably the drive of the day forget me winning maybe Sonoda's the drive of the day because Outside the top 10, the Aston shouldn't have, have have the pace to be up there, but he's done it. Sonoda somehow pulled it off. And unfortunately for me, like I said, the Audi, 
It's just a bit too quick in a straight line. He re-overtakes Jensen. He's got still a, a lap and a bit to go. So maybe there's a chance he can actually get back ahead. And to be fair, he might actually fight this at the corner. Jensen, can he get ahead through the next left to right? Yes, he will. He remains in third. Okay, okay. Game on. The Audi may be quicker in a straight line. But Button has got the wits about him. Leclerc to the inside. Button squeezes him. They bang tyres into turn one. Both of them trying to get the power down. But Jay. JB is relentless in his defence to stay in third place. But we ride on board now with Leclerc. And, oh, look at that. Oh, slam dunk overtake there. That Audi with DRS as well. So quick, so quick. Although, it's the last lap now. You actually might want to be behind someone if you want to overtake them on the last lap here. So don't count your chickens just yet. Button might be able to still get that double podium for us. Meanwhile, behind, Lando settles down for P5. Still pretty good, actually, considering the, the, the mistake of not pitting under the safety car. Piastri, that's a very solid result for McLaren. You know, it's been a, a long, long time since McLaren have looked good in this series since season four, was it? Gasly, P7 for Lamborghini. They'll I'll be annoyed Lamborghini as a whole though in this race because poor chair was obviously in pole position and instead we are in P1 much to the glee of myself and now can we get a little bit happier can Jensen Button climb up to third place yes he can with DRS and I think that may just be him booking in the double podium but back to our POV it's been a dominant display in the second stint we've controlled we've cruised to the end and we take victory at the Las Vegas Grand Prix finally finally lady luck is on our side in Las Vegas and something doesn't go wrong for us and JB gets the double podium we share a podium with Jensen Button for the first time in Formula One that was amazing that entire race was that was biblical that was nothing short of biblical scenes and with that we wrap up yet another incredible Grand Prix weekend Anthony Davidson how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. One of the most mental races ends with such a sweet reward. A 1-3 here, the race win. And also, to be fair, I'm, I'm very impressed, like I said, with Sonoda in second place. But what a banging race for round two of this season. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. We're going to soak this one in because it's been time and time. We've just lost out on the win. We've finally done it. We've won here in Nevada, Las Vegas. Come on. And the 1-3. Till next time, guys. Hope you enjoy us today. Goodbye.